I'm standing up today to talk about a woman who has had a significant impact on my career and the women's equality movement as a whole, Myra Bradwell. She was born in Vermont, but her family moved to Schaumburg when she was 12. She and her husband eventually settled in Chicago. She began her legal career apprenticing as a lawyer in her husband's office and assisting in research and legal writing. In 1868, Bradwell founded the Chicago Legal News, a widely circulated paper that published information about court opinions, laws, and court ordinances. Despite being supremely qualified and having the support of a federal judge and the state's attorney, in 1869, the Illinois Supreme Court denied her application for a law license on the grounds that as a married woman, she could not enter into any legal contracts. Bradwell appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court, claiming that refusing to admit her to the bar because she was female violated her 14th Amendment rights. In 1873, Bradwell versus Illinois, um, in that case, the Supreme Court held seven to one that the Privileges and Immunities Clause of the 14th Amendment did not include the right to practice a profession. As unthinkable as it might be to hear today, Justice Joseph Bradley wrote, the natural and proper timidity and delicacy which belongs to the female sex evidently unfits it for many of the occupations of civil life. The paramount destiny and mission of women are to fulfill the noble and benign offices of wife and mother. Anyone who has ever met me or any of my female colleagues here in the General Assembly uh, know that as members of the so-called fair sex, I am proud to be a wife and mother, and no one would ever call me timid or any of my sisters here. While Bradwell did not make any further attempts to gain her license, she assisted women in other states attempting to study law and gain law licenses in their own states. She continued to publish the Chicago Legal News and became active in the women's suffrage movement, serving as secretary of the Illinois Women's Suffrage Association. In 1890, the, the Supreme Court recognized the error of their ways and acted on its own motion to approve her original application. However, Myra was not the first female lawyer in Illinois. That honor goes to Alta Hewlett. While Myra pursued her advocacy through the courts, Alta petitioned this body, the Illinois General Assembly, and in 1872, we passed a state law prohibiting gender discrimination in admission to any occupation or profession except the military. At just 19 years of age, she became the first woman accepted to the Illinois Bar. She practiced law in Chicago and continued to advocate for three years until her unfortunate death at 22. Their efforts helped pave the way for other pioneers like Ida Platt, the first African-American woman to graduate from Chicago Kent College of Law. In 1894, she became the first African-American woman licensed to practice law in Illinois, and only the third in the US. Myra and Alta didn't just help forward the rights of women who wanted to be lawyers. To support women's suffrage and efforts to gain employment, Myra helped write the Illinois Married Women's Property Act, and with Alta, she wrote the Earnings Act of 1869. Guess we're still working on that. Both bills allowed married women to control their earnings and property. I'm able to stand here today with my sisters because these women stood up first. We are proud to call them native daughters. <laughs>